seen recently um, a series of videos on the Auto Trader YouTube site, um, fronted by Rory Reed, about a Tesla Model S that has done 430,000 miles on its original battery and motors. And, you know, Rory went to visit the owner of this car. And in fact, he's got two Tesla Model S's. He runs an airport um, taxi service. And he bought uh, the first one, the one that's done 430,000 miles in 2016. So it's eight years old. So uh, Rory interviews the owner of these cars. And um, in the subsequent uh, videos, they actually put it through some tests to see how it stood uh, the test of uh, eight years and uh, an, an unbelievable amount of uh, mileage. So, um, yeah, hello, welcome to Key in Aero Diaries. It's 16th of July. And, uh, you know, I've always been kind of fascinated, really, by um, cars that have extreme use cases. And uh, I think this goes back to the 1970s when I was first driving. And we were tending to drive, obviously, with, you know, kids, <laughs> teenagers, apprentices, whatever we were then um, and um, uh, you know what what cars do the highest mileages and you know the kind of urban legends around you know my VW Beetle goes on forever and it's done whatever mileage and if you really want to do high mileages Volvo's last longer than any other car and uh, you know it's kind of uh, interesting because um, in the early 80s I was um, uh, a computer service engineer and for a couple of years I was racking up sort of 40,000 miles a year which is um, you know that's really high um, but I think the average driver in or the average car in the UK is, does about eight and a half thousand a year uh, miles a year so um, that was kind of interesting for me and then in the late 1980s in a I think it was in a Sunday uh, Times or magazine or, or some something like that it was a Sunday magazine. They featured a guy uh, who lived in uh, New York State. He was a school teacher, and back in 1966, he'd gone into his Volvo, Volvo dealership, having been fed up with the reliability and quality of uh, American-built cars. Um, I think he had a Chevrolet or something. I don't know. And, and he he spent uh, um, a year's salary on a Volvo P1800 and for any of you old enough you may remember a TV series in the UK called The Saint um, which was uh, you know the main character was uh, the future James Bond uh, Roger Moore so and, and he drove one of these Volvo P1800s very sleek you know, it was a very kind of sexy car back in the 1960s so this mid-twenties, whatever he was then, I think school teacher just, you know, invested all his money in the, in this car. And, and by the late 1980s, it had done a million miles. So that's why he was in this um, Sunday Times or whatever it was, magazine. And um, I kind of took an interest in this guy. His name's Irv Gordon. And, um, and apparently he had an engine rebuild at 600,000 miles. And goodness knows how many oil changes. So um, Irv Gordon went on to fame and uh, not fortune, I don't think, but he was just a bit of a celebrity. Um, and uh, when he died in 2018, this uh, Volvo had done 3.2 million miles. And I think it's in the Guinness Book of Records as being the most miles driven by any private owner of any car. You, um, you may ask what use is it in terms of an indicator of uh, longevity and reliability of that um, guy of Gordon. I mean, he owned the car for 52 years. I mean, who keeps their car for 52 years? And I mean, if you divide 3.2 million by 52, you get that he averaged 61 and a half thousand miles a year. Now that is a lot of driving. It's not an amount of driving that most people would want to do um, it's just an incredible waste of time, uh, in my view. And I think, you know, most people would have better things to do than just drive around. But Irv Gordon, he loved driving. He took the car to Europe. He took the car to China, Australia. I think he, he, he took it onto every continent. He drove this car around. And wherever he went, the, the Volvo concessionaires there wanted to, uh, you know, to meet him and take photos. And then the car was 
uh, being used in um, sort of exhibitions and uh, all this kind of stuff. So, um, but really, I mean, most people are not going to keep a car for 52 years. And then you do ask the question, well, how many engine rebuilds did he have? Uh, how many gearboxes did, uh, did he get through? And how, you know, how much tender loving care did this car get? Because I imagine it got an awful lot. But anyway, um, the fact is that you've still got an engine with pistons going up and down and crankshafts going round and valves popping about there there's mechanical wear going on and of course none of that uh, really happens in a electric car I mean a, a motor um, would just spin and spin I mean eventually it'll die but it's quite possible I think that a electric uh, motor could uh, in a car could do a million miles and I think there already is one or two cases maybe in China of taxis but I mean, really, um, a car doing over 3 million miles and in that long period of time, 61,500 miles a year, well, a lot of taxi drivers will say, yeah, I do that much. I do 80,000 or even 100,000 miles a year. But of course, they don't keep the cars that long. I mean, I, um, when I lived in Dubai, we used to run around, you know, we used to go everywhere in taxis and they used Toyota Camrys and they used to get to about half a million kilometers, 600,000 sometimes and swap them out. Um, I had a few interesting conversations with um, taxi drivers about um, Toyota Camrys and just, you know, fantastic engines. But they still need oil changes. They'll still need maintenance. Um, and, you know, you could do that in an electric car quite easily. There's already plenty of examples of, uh, you know, uh, especially Teslas, because, you know, Teslas keep in touch with the mothership. So they have got more data on them. Um, on, on what the cars are doing and, and there are already many many thousands of Model S's and Model 3's even now with over two three hundred thousand miles on and they're still going and obviously you know is it the original battery well if you care to watch the um, the videos they they put it through its uh, paces to see you know how what's the range like now and yeah it's still got a decent range surprisingly enough I think it's got about 74 75 percent of its uh, original range after 400,000 miles I mean that's that's a lifetime of driving for a lot of people and uh, you know but they're never going to keep a car for the amount of time that um, that uh, it would take them to reach that uh, mileage so again is it really uh, a good indication of how durable um, an electric car would be but actually, um, one of the things that occurred to me was, what about other electric cars like, you know, the key e-Nero, e for example? I mean, there's a guy um, uh, also on YouTube called Jonathan Porterfield Cars, and he lives up in the Orkneys, and he is a car buyer and seller. Um, and he's up and back from the Orkneys quite a lot. He does rack up a fair few miles. And a few years ago, he decided, uh, having owned Nissan Leafs and various other electric cars, I mean, he's got far more experience, years of driving electric cars than, you know, than, than, than I have, and certainly most people. And he settled on a Kia e Nero. It's um, a newer one than, than ours, but it, and it's fully specced. I think in the UK, they call it the 4 Plus or something. It's got all the feet, all the, all the toys. Um, and he leased this car. And he recently did a video where he's talking about he's decided to um, buy the car off the leasing company and get a quote. And he, get, he takes you through all that and he buys the car and I think it's done about 36,000 miles. And quite interestingly, one, one of the comments on that video was from a guy that I recognized from way back, way before I got the electric car. And this guy is called Fancy a Bev Mate. And he said, oh, he said, yeah, I've got an e-Nero. I'm in the private hire business and I've done 100 and whatever it is, 1,000 miles, still no range loss. And he goes, mm, okay, that's interesting. So I actually replied to him. And I said, ah, oh, I used to watch your videos back in the day when you had a Nissan Leaf. And you, it was very early days of electric cars and you were really sticking your neck out there and, you know, going for an EV for your job. Because obviously, I mean, you know, that's how he makes his living. He's a professional driver and... Um, uh, you know, it, I, I think it's always interesting to see what you know people who drive for a living think of, uh, of these cars and what their customers uh, and what their customers think of, of them. So uh, anyway, I, he actually replied to me and said, "Oh yeah, I've got um, I've got a mate who 
<laughs> Someone's always got a mate, right? Um, I've got a mate who's got an e Nero that's gone 235,000 miles. And you go, mm, okay, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> never going to do that in my lifetime. But, uh, you know, and he, he and he said it's, it's still going fine. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I guess we won't really know uh, how long EVs last until we've got the combination of... Um, you know, the duty cycle aging and the calendar aging. So what will a, a normal car that's done 10,000 a year and it's 20 years old and so it's done 200,000, but it's just the calendar aging, how's it going to look? There'll be battery degradation, but will it still be useful? And I think that's the key thing because um, having, you know, as a young man and an older person owned what, we used to term old bangers, you know, you just go and buy a car for a thousand and you and and you're not gonna keep it maybe that long. Sometimes you're surprised and it and it goes okay, but you know, the starter motor goes and so you replace that. And then the fuel pump goes and you replace that. And then it's the water pump, and then it's uh, the, you know, spark plugs need changing and it just with a fossil fuel car, there's so many components. Not you know obviously there's thousands of moving parts in the engine and gearbox um, which are subject to wear and if you don't change the oil then you're in trouble uh, the thing needs babying all the time and electric cars don't need any of that kind of babying maintenance uh, I call it um, but uh, you know th 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 there's so many subsystems you know there's an exhaust system there's a cooling system there's a fuel system. And an electric car is just basically a motor, a reduction gear, um, uh, you know, uh, the battery, of course, which is the big thing, and a control unit. And um, obviously there's, you know, it, there's got all the components that a, a fossil fuel car has, like, you know, the steering rack and the wheel bearings and brakes, although brakes in an electric car, I mean, it, there's loads of examples. I mean, James and Kate on e EVs, that's another YouTube channel where he goes around and maintains electric cars and he I think last year he did one where he visited he maintained a 200,000 mile taxi um, Tesla Model 3 and he showed a, a, around the car and how well it's sort of living up to the wear and tear and it's and it's brakes it, it's still on the original discs I don't know about the pads but it, the you know and, and he, he's saying you, you, you could never in a fossil fuel car, run a taxi where you're obviously in town, stop starting a lot. You're going to need to change your discs every 30, 40,000 miles. I mean, my, my experience is that anyway of owning, um, you know, fossil fuel cars. You, you've only got the friction brakes. You don't have any um, regenerative braking. Um, you, know, the, you know, the motor doesn't become a generator and slow you down as you lift your foot. Um, uh, and I mean... Well, I'm I'm told that my brakes after hundred thousand kilometres, yeah, fine, perfect. So, anyway, um, just thought you might find that interesting. Uh, extreme use case cars. Really interested if anyone else has got any uh, experiences of, of this. I mean, again, there's lots of urban legends and uh, stories, but uh, when something like, um, like Auto Trader come along and they feature a car like this. Uh, a 430,000 mile Tesla, then you think, well, okay, is that normal? Would, would most Teslas or most electric cars be able to do that? Anyway, um, so uh, car going in for service on Monday, um, lots more to talk about, lots going on in, you know, in the world of electric cars at the moment. So um, yeah, I think I'll do some more videos. Thank you for watching. Until the next time.